Welcome back to Harbor Unbox. Today I'm giving you my top five best GPU picks of 2022. This year has seen a lot of new graphics card releases and very few of them, I'm sad to say, have been all that exciting. In fact, most of them have been pretty underwhelming, resulting in a situation where the product that sucks the least is kind of the winner. That said, there are a few models that have fallen below MSRP to a point where they're actually pretty decent deals. They weren't necessarily released in 2022, but you could buy them in 2022. And then of course, there are those that were massively overpriced, but some of them did offer incredible performance. So depending on your perspective, you could argue you're getting what you paid for there. Anyway, we'll start from the bottom and then work our way up the food chain. But before we do, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI's GeForce RTX 40 series of graphics cards and the epic PC case gear unboxed 4090 gaming PC, AKA the Balin PC. During a recent live stream, we built our video editor Balin, the ultimate gaming PC, which he's been using to mostly play Warzone 2 and Fortnite, and has been loving the blazing fast performance. And the best news being, you can now own the Balin PC. Now, the key component that enables this PC to blast through the latest and greatest games with ease is the MSI GeForce RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio 24GB graphics card, supporting all the standard RTX 40 series features such as ray tracing, DLSS 3, and NVENC with AV1 encoding. The Balin PC is also armed with an Intel Core i9-13900K processor on the MSI MPG Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi DDR5 motherboard, so for more information, please check the links in the video description. Okay, so for $200 or less, there aren't that many options, certainly very few good ones, and a truly bad example would be the 6500 XT, launched back on January 19th, and the then exclusive 4GB model was released at an MSRP of $200 US. But due to the supply and demand issues at the time, it began life closer to, say, $300, with some models even exceeding that price point. Today it can be had for $160 US, though at times has dropped much closer to $100, which frankly is where it belongs. In fact, it is probably a sub $100 US product, but I digress. Point is, the 6500 XT sucked when it was released back in January, and by December it still sucks despite a fairly reasonable discount. That's because for $60 more, you can get yourself the RX 6600. And although that's around a 40% price premium, the 6600 is on average 80% faster at 1080p. The RX 6600 also supports video encoding, more than two display outputs, twice the PCIe bandwidth, and can produce more than 60 FPS in modern AAA titles using reasonable quality settings at 1080p. So for those of you with around $200 US to spend on a graphics card, the Radeon RX 6600 is your best value option. Having said all of that though, if you can push your budget closer to $300, the 6650 XT is also a great option, costing a little over 20% more than the vanilla model for around 20% more performance. There's no GeForce alternative at this price point, at least not one that's worthy of consideration. The RTX 3050 still costs at least $290 US, pricing it closer to the 6650 XT, which is an issue for Nvidia, as the plain old RX 6600 straight up destroys the 3050, delivering on average almost 30% more performance while costing less. So the RTX 3050 was dead on arrival and remains dead to this day. Now, for those of you with around $400 to spend on a graphics card, Nvidia does start to become competitive. The best options here include the GeForce RTX 3060 Ti and Radeon RX 6700 XT slash 6750 XT. The 6750 XT is around 5% faster on average than the 6700 XT, so if pricing similar in your region, you might as well just go with the newer refresh model. Right now in Newegg, for example, the 6750 XT is typically around 10% more expensive than the 6700 XT, making the original better value, so my recommendation in that particular example would be for the 6700 XT, then you can overclock it to get 6750 XT performance for free. Alternatively, there's the RTX 3060 Ti, which can be had for a little over $400, so very similar to the 6750 XT in terms of pricing, but ultimately worse when it comes to the value equation, as it costs 15% more than the 6700 XT, and is also around 5% slower on average. You're also looking at around $330 for the standard RTX 3060, resulting in a similar cost per frame to that of the 3060 Ti. And the problem with the 3060 is the fact that if you spend around 10% more on the 6700 XT, you'll receive around 35% more performance. So that means the 3060 Ti is really the first GeForce product where I'd start to entertain the idea of actually purchasing it. And really the advantages Nvidia has over AMD at these lower performance tiers are more limited. 
In my opinion, stuff like ray tracing performance, it's not terribly useful here. So the only real key selling point would be DLSS, but then the upscaling options for Radeon GPUs are improving all the time. The $500 to $800 price range, it's a bit of a tough one at the moment, and the time to buy has temporarily expired. By that I mean, most of the good deals on Radeon RX 6800 and 6800 XT graphics cards have already been snapped up. At the time of making this video, Newegg lists multiple 6800 XTs for between $540 and $550, but none are in stock, while some local retailers have even removed 6800 XT listings entirely. If you can land a 6800 XT for around $500 US, that's a good deal, but much over that and we really wouldn't bother. Meanwhile, RTX 3070 start closer to $600, with most of them costing more, so I'd also pass on those. 3070s, in my opinion, really should be priced closer to $400. The same applies to the RTX 3070 Ti's. For a new model, you're looking at having to spend more like $700, which makes no sense for a number of reasons, probably none more so than the fact that the terrible value Radeon RX 7900 XT costs just $200 more, so just shy of a 30% price premium there for over 60% more performance. And really, it's the same story with the RTX 3080s as well. So basically, the only GeForce 30 series GPU worth investing in right now is the 3060 Ti. Everything else appears to be pretty well dead, outside of a few limited deals here and there. So the best value high-end GPU of 2022 has been the 6800 XT, 6900 XT, or 6950 XT, as shown in our recent 7900 series content. Sadly, though, those deals have pretty much run out at this point, but the good news is they will make way for next generation GPUs. We just have to hope they don't suck nearly as much as the 7900 XT, though unfortunately we're kind of expecting them to. Speaking of those next gen GPUs, for those of you with around $1,000 to spend, or quite a bit more than $1,000 in the case of Nvidia, here are options. Starting with AMD, we have the Radeon RX 7900 XT that's meant to be selling for $900, though I can't really find much stock at that price. And then we have the 7900 XTX, which is the more popular item of those two. That's meant to be $1,000, but it currently can't be found for that price. And really, all I was able to find was scalper prices, which obviously you should avoid. Then we have the RTX 4080, which can be sometimes be found at $1,200 US, so the MSRP. But realistically, it's often much closer to $1,300 US. As voted by our viewers, the Radeon RX 7900 XT is the better deal here assuming that you can find one at the $1,000 US MSRP. And of course, most of you agree that both of these products suck, at least at their current price points. And that's why I'm frankly not that impressed with either of these options. The RTX 4080 really does suck in terms of value at $1,200. And the 7900 XTX at $1,000 might seem like the better deal, and depending on your preferences, it may actually be. But with the weaker RT performance, inferior upscaling in terms of image quality and game support, along with the higher power consumption and numerous driver bugs, means that for me, the XTX has to cost at least $200 less. So that means at best it matches the RTX 4080, a product we already kind of thought you shouldn't buy because the value simply wasn't there. So it really is hard to get excited about that. Then there's the 7900 XT, which costs just 10% less than the XTX, but is at least 17% slower. So that's even less exciting. So what you do here, it's hard to say. You can't really buy a 700 XTX anyway, and the RTX 4080s are all above MSRP, so you might as well wait. Let the early adopters and fanboys snap them up at stupid prices, wait for the market to cool off, and then perhaps snap yourself a deal. At their MSRPs though, I don't feel strongly about any of these products, and I don't care to argue which is the best deal. At the end of the day, you're arguing about which is the best of a bad bunch. And the king of ice the bad bunch is the GeForce RTX 4090, a product that I really can't decide if I love or hate. Yeah, at $1,600 US, it is disgustingly expensive, but the market does set the price, and Nvidia has worked out the gamers are willing to pay that much and possibly more for top tier performance, so I guess here we are. Really, we can complain about the prices of these high end GPUs all day, but ultimately, it's going to change nothing if people keep buying them and buying them they are, en masse it seems. Right now there isn't an RTX 4090 to be found at most retailers, Newegg for example lists almost a dozen models and none of them are in stock, even the ASUS ROG Strix model which sells for $2,000. So the RTX 4090 wins the ultimate high-end GPU category by default, given there's no competition from AMD, offering around 25% more performance than the 7900 XTX, and while it might cost 60% more at the MSRP, 
gamers who want the best of the best appear more than happy to pay the premium. And with both the 4090 and 700 XTX out of stock right now, it's very hard to imagine high-end pricing tumbling anytime soon. So there you have it. The final GPU update of 2022, the UA gamers rejoiced over the fact they could finally buy a graphics card again, only to end up disappointed once they could. Well, at least that was the story of the mid to high-end value conscious shopper. For those of you seeking the best of the best and don't really care about the price, then I guess it was a pretty exciting year. The RTX 4090 is certainly breathtakingly fast. It was also nice to see a number of more affordable Radeon GPUs, such as the Radeon RX 6600 drop well below their MSRP, so there are some positive takeaways. Also, early next year, the next generation mid-range to high-end parts will arrive, such as the heavily leaked RTX 4070 Ti, which is probably just that unlaunched 12 gigabyte 4080. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Still, AMD will have to counter that one with something like a 700 XT, so the GPU wars do look set to heat up in 2023. And with that, I'm gonna end this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. You can subscribe for more content, and we do have Floatplane and Patreon. So to either one of those things, you'll get access to stuff like exclusive live streams, Discord servers, behind the scenes content, and Q&A related stuff. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.